my name is Leo and welcome to a new day, and sorry, another reading of the Elder Scrolls. Today we'll be reading A Brief History of the Empire, Part 3. Let's continue our story. The first volume of this series tells in brief the history of the succession of the first eight emperors of the Septim Dynasty from Tiber I to Kintaro II. The second volume describes the War of the Red Diamond and the six emperors that followed its aftermath. Uriel III to Cassida I. At the end of that volume, I described how the Emperor Cassida's half-brother, Uriel IV, assumed the throne of the Empire of Tamriel. It will be recalled that Uriel IV was not a Septim by birth. His mother, though she reigned as Empress for many years, was a Dark Elf, married to a true Septim Emperor, Pelagius III. His father was Catria's Catria I's consort after Pelagius' death, and during her reign, a Breton nobleman named Galavir Laureate before taking the throne of the empire, Cassidy the I had ruled the, em the ruled the kingdom of Rayrest, but poor health had forced him to retire. Cassidy had no children, so he legally adopted his half brother Uriel and gave him the kingdom. Seven years later, Cassidy inherited the empire at the death of his mother. Three years after that, Uriel found himself the recipient of Cassida's inheritance once again. Uriel the IV's reign was difficult and was a difficult and long one. Despite being a legal a legally adopted member of the Septim family, and despite the Larius family's high position, indeed they were distant cousins of the Septims, few of the Elder Council could be persuaded to accept, accept him fully as a blood relation of Tiber. The council had assumed much responsibility during Catria I's long reign and Cassidy I's short reign, and a strong-willed alien monarch like Uriel IV found it impossible to hold their unswerving fealty. Time and time again, the council and emperor were at odds, and time and time again, the Council won the battles. Since the days of Pelagius II, the Elder Council had consisted of the wealthiest men and women of the Empire, and the power they wielded was ultimate. The Council's last victory over Uriel IV was post posthumous. Advyak, Uriel IV's son, was disinherited by vote of the Council and a cousin more closely related to the original Septim line was proclaimed Sepphoris II in Third Era 268. Sepphoris had been a Nordic king of... Wait, what? Hold up. Look that shit up. I'll be right back. Okay, so I checked, and it doesn't actually say. It's just missing from the text. Well, I... hmm, okay. <laughs> Severus had been a Nordic king of... somewhere in... Nordland, I guess? Skyrim, I suppose? For the first nine years of Severus the, f the Second's reign, those loyal to Androk battled the Imperial forces in an act that the sage Ekatrine called Tiber Septim's heart beating no more. Ooh. The council granted Andriac the hierarch kingdom of Shornhelm to end the war. Andriac's descended still rule that land. Of course, Sephiroth the Second had foes that demanded more of his attention than Andriac. Uh, from out of a nightmare, in the words of Atarain, a man who called himself the Camonian Usurper, which I think we've read about had led an army of Daedra and undead warriors on a rampage through Valenwood, 
conquering kingdom after kingdom. None could resist his onslaughts. And as month turned to bloody month in the year 3rd era 249, fewer even tried. Sephiroth the second sent more and more mercenaries to Hammer into Hammerfell to stop the usurper's northward march, but they were bribed, turned into undead, or slaughtered. The story of the Cameronian usurper does deserve a book of its own. I recommend the reader find Hanux Elias, The Fall of the Usurper, which we- uh, did we read that yet? I can't remember if we read that already. For more detail, in short, the destruction of the forces of the Usurper had little to do with the efforts of the Emperor. The results was a great regional victory and an increase in hostility towards the seemingly ineffectuous Empire. Uriel V turned opinion back towards the potential power of the Empire. Turning the attention of Tamriel away from international strife, Uriel V embarked on a series of invasions, beginning almost from the moment he took the throne in 3rd era 268. Uriel V conquered Rokreya in 271, Kalithque in 276, Yanslea in 279, and Esronet in 284. In 3rd era 288, he embarked on his most ambitious enterprise, the invasion of the continent kingdom of Akavar. This was ultimately a failure, for two years later, Uriel V was killed in Akavar on the battlefield of Lordareth. Nevertheless, Uriel V holds a reputation second only to Tiber as the great warrior emperor of Tamriel. The last four emperors, beginning with Uriel V's infant son, are described in the fourth and final volume of the series that we shall read tomorrow. Yay. So that was A Brief History of the Empire, Part 3. <coughs> Excuse me. By Stronach Kazu the third Imperial Historian. So I will see you tomorrow for the final volume. But for now, my name is Leo, and I will see you next time.